you were the children of a heavenly king. Count me with the servants who will service bring. Count me with the ransom who is praises sing. Count me, count me.
praise the Lord. It's time for the search the scriptures. Let's sit together. Let's pray. In Jesus' name, we pray. Yeah, Father, we thank you for this privilege of searching the scriptures. We are seeing, dear Lord, at this moment, you will teach us, you will guide us, and grant us the grace to respond to the teaching and obey your words in Jesus' name. May the word this morning touch our hearts and transform our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. This morning, we have come together to search the scriptures. Let's all see together, pay attention, so that we can benefit from the teachings. Last week, we had a study. We saw the scripture from lesson 5, 9, 5, 7, which is danger of compromise in the church. Lesson 9, 5, 7. From that study, we saw the message of Christ to the church in Pagamos, identifying Christ as the ministerial Lord who knows and sees everything in his church and in every action of every believer. In that revelation, chapter 2, verse 13, there the Lord said, I know thy works, implying that he knows everything that happens in the church. Also, he says, Thou holdest fast my name and hast not denied my faith. Talking about the commitment of the faithful to the service of the Lord. Then further he said in verse 14, I have a few things against thee. Yes, Christ despised the faithfulness of the church. Christ still identifies Things that are wanting mean that there is no amount of faithfulness and commitment that will manifest in the service of the Lord that can cover any action of disobedience and sinfulness if it is found in our lives. And finally, in that study, Christ called everyone in the church and today to repent. He says in verse 16. Repent or else, I will come unto thee quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He calls everyone to repentance, every erring to repentance, every member to repentance, and every sinner to repentance. So we can align with his words, obey his words, and receive his blessings. Let's take us to the study this morning, which is lesson 958, warning against corruptions in the church. Warning against corruptions in the church. Our memory verse this morning comes from Revelation 2, verse 22. Revelation chapter 2 from verse 22. Can we start it together? One, to go, behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. You can say it again. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. Here is a serious statement from Jesus Christ as he speaks and warns against corruption in the church. This study this morning comes from 
Revelation 2 from verse 18. Let's read together. And unto the angel of the church in Tantara write, These things says the Son of God, who had his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet as like fine brass. I know thy works and charity and service and faith and thy patience and thy works and thy lacks to be more than the first. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Verse 22. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. That we kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and the hearts, and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. But unto you, I said, and unto the rest in Titera, as many as have not this doctrine and which have not known the depths of Satan, as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden. Verse 25, But that which you have already hold fast till I come, and he that overcometh and keepeth my words unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I receive of my father. And I will give him the morning stars. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the churches. I pray the Lord to give us ears and understanding to hear and obey the word of the Lord in Jesus' name. Yes, the study this moment centers on Christ's letter to the Tartarian church. This church in Tartaria was full of good works as we saw in verse 19. I know thy work. They had Christ like sound faith, they manifest Christian charity of love, they had Christian service labor of faith, they manifest Christian patience in their dealings, they had growing faith, increasing faith. From this a human evaluation, this godly attribute we have seen are enough to give a church 100% pass mark and overlook errors. But Christ, notwithstanding, said, I have a few things against thee. Because he is the Lord. From human perception, from human evaluation, we can overlook the error and say there's past mark. No. Heaven won't accept that. Christ's kingdom won't accept that. And our Lord Jesus Christ won't accept that. Notwithstanding, in verse 20, I have a few things against thee. Because thou sufferest that woman, Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servant to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Christ, searching eyes, sees everything. And from this very word of Jesus Christ, we see our Lord, the omniscient Christ, saw the seductions. So the sensualities and the pollution, the filthiness that perpetrated and committed by a self-appointed and a self-imposed 
prophetess called Jezebel in that church. And Christ's watchful eyes identifies that very agents of the devil and eventually spoke against her. Yes, through self-imposition and manipulative control, this sinner exerted evil influence over the entire leadership of the Church of Titanians and badly affected the lives of some members in verse 15. Yet he says, and so had thou also them that hold the doctrine of regulators, which things I hate, has affected the life of some people in that very church. Unfortunately, the leadership of this church could not resist her evil and deliver the captives. May the Lord grant every leader in this our church to fully stand out for Christ and defend the entire doctrines of the Bible and deliver every captive in Jesus' name. Finally, Jesus commended virtues of this church but condemned the vices in her. Question number one. What was the spiritual state of the church in Titania? The spiritual state. You can see as you have read from the scripture, though the church has some comments of the mark of good deeds, but the church allowed pollutions, defilements, compromise in the church. As believers and leaders were to stand against compromise, but to stand against pollution. There's no mark of righteousness that is enough to cover any evil when it is found. Let's see this teaching under three subheadings. One, commendable works of true Christians in the church. Two, Clear warnings against corruption in the church and train commands and promise to overcomers in the church. Let's go to point number one. Commendable works of true Christians in the church. Revelation chapter 2, verses 18 and 19. And unto the angel of the church in Titania writes, These things says the Son of God, who had his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. I know thy works, and charity, and service, and faith, and thy patience, and thy works, and the last to be more than the first. Here is commendable works of true Christians in the church. The action here was commended by Christ himself. But we note here that Christ introduced himself to the church as the Son of God and emphasized his divinity and authority. He was further identified that he has eyes like unto a flame of fire and feet like fine brass. Not in the case, one, Christ's penetrating eyes as flame of fire, which reveal his holy intelligence and omniscience, knowing all things. Number two, his feet like fine brass reveal strength and ability that is ready to trample down and destroy a repentant enemy. Jesus Christ says, notably in verse 2, I know thy works. In verse 9, I know thy works. In verse 13, I know thy works. And in verse 19, I know thy works. This message to the church shows that Christ knows. One, the activities of that church, and by extension, the activities of every church today. Number two, 
Christ knows the leadership of that church, and today he knows the leadership of every church. Number three, the members of that church are well known. Their activities, their actions are well known to Christ. In the same way today, every member of the church is known to Christ. Every activity in the church are all known to Christ. May God help us to really walk out our salvation with fear and trembling before God in Jesus' name. Now, what remark will Christ make about you today? As a pastor of the church, what remark will he make about you today as the leader of the church? What remark will he make about you today as a member of a church like ours? In verse 19 again, he says, I know thy works and charity and service and faith and thy patience and thy works and the life to be more than the first. Christ here says, I know thy works. We saw the commendation here for the lives of the believers in the church. They were empowered to live holy lives, as the Bible said, as many as receive Christ, to them God gave the power to become sons of God. When we become believers, we are empowered to live holy life, to live righteous life. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance against such there is no law. Here in Galatians 5.22, we saw here the Spirit of God empowers believers to live the Christian lives. At the point of salvation, every believer is empowered to bear this fruit fruit of the Spirit, which manifests in our Christian character, and this becomes evidence of our relationship with Christ. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 5, Beside this, giving all diligence, act to your faith, virtue and to virtue, knowledge, and to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, patience, and to patience, godliness. Verse 7, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. Verse 8. For if these sins be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 9. But he that lacketh these sins is blind and cannot see afar off, and forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Here is the fruit bearing Christians. Here is the fruit that is made possible through our relationship with Christ. When we give our life to Jesus Christ, our deliberate abiding in Christ makes us fruitful. And our diligence abiding in Christ and absorbing the word of God makes us fruitful. In John 15, verse 4, John chapter 15, verse 4. Yeah, Jesus says, Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of his steps, except he abide in the vines, no more can ye except he abide in me. You see, the need for us to bear fruit of righteousness is important as believers. We are called to possess and manifest this godly attribute for the growth and advancement of the church, and fortification of the church as well as the salvation of the unsaved. And when this is seen in believers, we are commended. In 1 Corinthians 15, I read verse 57. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 57. But thanks be to Christ, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye you know your labor is not 
vain in the Lord. Always abounding in the work of the Lord, always abounding in the love of God. And when this is seen in us, it brings commendation from Christ. And abounding in Christ's works, we show in our lives, one, there will be godly zeal. Two, there will be Christ-like love. Three, there will be unwavering faith. Four, enduring patience. Five, abiding works. Number six, uncompromising conviction. And finally, there will be undying commitment to the cause of the cross. Question number two, mention some commendable characters of true believers. We have seen it. These characters include godly zeal, Christ-like love, wavering faith, enduring patience, abiding works, compromising conviction, and undying commitment. Let's go to point number two. Point number two, clear warnings against corruptions in the church. The warning is clear from the Lord of the church. The warning is clear from Christ our Savior. Revelation chapter 2, verse 20 to 23. Revelation chapter 2, from verse 20. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman, Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess to teach and to seduce my servants, and to commit fornication and to eat in sacrifice unto idols. I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and then that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he which searched the reins of heart, and I will give unto every man of you according to your works. Here is a clear warning from Christ. Yes, the church in Titanic though was commended for good works. Her fault was not overlooked. Her fault was not disregarded. The filthiness in the church was not disregarded. Her patience of faith was commended, but her tolerance of evil and corruption was condemned. Our Lord Jesus Christ strongly condemned her complacencies and permissiveness that allowed Jezebel, who is a false prophetess, to teach people to seduce the servants of Christ to weaken the servants of Christ, to commit fornications, and to eat things, sacrifice to idols. I pray that every pastor in the church, all the workers in the church, will be empowered by the Holy Ghost to rebuke sin, to rebuke evil. I pray that every pastor and leaders in this church and every pulpit will be empowered to uproot Evil wherever they are found in Jesus' name. All present there, Jezebels, who teach heresies and seditions. All present there, Jezebels, who treat in holiness and stabilize the church, will be uprooted. All opposers of standard of holiness, they will be uprooted. All present Jezebels that wield ungodly influence over our preachers, we be uprooted in Jesus' name. They be quickly resisted. They be removed so that holiness of heart, holiness of life, holiness of character, holiness of doctrine, which is our God-given heritage, must not be compromised. And by God's grace, it will not be compromised in Jesus' name. We are going to stand by the word of God. God helping us, we will stand by the word of God in Jesus' name. The warning that Christ gave here is coming to every one of us today as leaders in the church, 
as members in the church, as workers in the church, that Christ cannot and will never to arrest sin and evil wherever it is found. We want to stand by the word of God and by the grace of God we shall stand in Jesus' name. Whatever is the challenge, whatever is the pressure they were found among us, we found in our peculiar places of ministry, God will give us the courage. God will give us all it takes to stand and uproot evil. Because whatever good we have done, whatever good we have preached, if we allow sin, allow compromise, if you allow defilement and pollution, that will mar every other thing. That will counter every other thing. And Christ in a strong time will condemn such at the end of time. So for our work to endure, we must stand against pollution, we must stand against evil, we must stand against anyone that wants to corrupt the church. And God helping us, we shall stand in Jesus' name. Question number three. What is false doctrine and why must the church watch against it? We've seen from the Bible that false doctrine is any teaching that compromises the holy standard of God. Any teaching that contradicts sound doctrines of the Bible. And therefore, as Christians, as pastors, we must watch against that in the church, against that among believers, against that in our lives. And wherever it is seen or observed, quick action will be taken to uproot and to remove such evil and deliver the church from such pollution. The Lord, we give us the grace in Jesus' name. As of the apostles, chapter 20, verse 28, take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flocks over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God which he has purchased with his own blood. Here is a call and a caution to take heed. That means to watch that means to guide against intrusion, to guide against defilement, to guide against perpetrators of false doctrine, to watch against their evil influence in the church, so that the church will preserve. God helping us, our church will be preserved in Jesus' name. The church of today and every believer today must heed the Lord's warning and zealously against every negative tendency that may jeopardize our future. To avoid this impending rot, to avoid God's impending rot, we must take a stand. We must take a stand against lukewarmness, against backsliding. And whenever it is seen in the church, God demand one thing very clearly. Number one, there must be conviction from everyone that has gone against the standard of God's works that has sinned against God. Whenever it is seen in the church, God demands conviction. There must be conviction from such one of every present sin. Number two, there must be conversion to Christ from such sin. Because it will be dealt with, number three, such converted person will be committed to the entire doctrine of Christ. Number four, will be consecrated to the service of the Lord. Number five, will be fervent in the Lord. Number six, will be full of faith to continue the journey. And number seven, that person will be faithful to the end. This Christ demand the entire church and to every believer in the church, so that we can run the Christian race so safely to the end in Jesus' name. Therefore, in our localities, 
in our present place of ministry, in our church, as members in the neighborhood, we are to watch. The Bible says, take heed. We are to guide against the intrusion of false doctrine that defies the church. And wherever it is seen, and whenever it is seen, we must make sure that such people who are already affected are drawn to a point of conviction, to be convicted of what they have done, of conversion, to be converted from the error they have allowed, and then to be committed back to the doctrine of Christ. Then that will be consecration to the Lord's service. Such people will be fervent in their fellowship, will be fervent in prayer, will be fervent in communion with the Lord. Such people will be full of faith once again. And finally, they will be faithful to the end, so that our labor will not be in vain in Jesus' name. Question number four, what must a corrupt church do to avert divine judgment? What must a corrupt church do to avert divine judgment? As of the Apostle, chapter 17, I read verse 30. And the time of this ignorance, God went at, but none commanded all men everywhere to repent. Repentance must be the action. There must be repentance from anyone that has gone astray. Commanding all men to repent, commanding all women to repent, commanding all boys and girls to repent, commanding all children and everyone everywhere to repent. Jesus emphasized it very clearly in Luke 13, verse 5. Luke 13, verse 5, Jesus said, I tell you, name, if the saints you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Except you repent. Except you repent. I say, demand from everyone. If anyone is practicing evil while in the church today, Christ will not spare you. Judgment will not spare you. For God is coming for repentance. And by the grace of God, there will be repentance in Jesus' name. If anyone is occupying the seat in the church and is still living in sin secretly, the mercy of God is waiting. The grace of God is waiting. And this day, the Lord is calling for repentance in Jesus' name. And by the grace of God, when such one repents, there will be forgiveness. When such one repents, there will be restoration. When such one repents, the grace of God is always available to receive, to accept, to cleanse, and to help such one to continue the Christian race in Jesus' name. So, we must watch against the evil in the church. We must heed the warning so that at the end of time, God helping us will be able to end well in Jesus' name. Let's see our point number three, which is command and promise for overcomers in the church. Command and promise to overcomers. Let's go back to Revelation chapter 2. I see from verse 24. Revelation chapter 2, from verse 24. But unto you I said, and unto the rest in the Titeria, as many as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden. But that which ye have already hold fast till I come. Verse 26. He that overcometh and keepeth my words unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and the vessels of water shall they be broken to shivers, even as I receive of my father. 28. That will give him the morning star. 
He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. There is a command and a promise to overcomers in the church. The Lord make us overcomers in Jesus' name. By the grace of God, we shall overcome. Yes, the Bible says that we who are called, we are to overcome. The church in Tessera we are studying was doctrinally and morally corrupt. Yes, still some believers in that church upheld Christ's words and holy standards. That's what the Bible says in verse 24. But unto you I said, and the rest, Tessera, as many as have not this doctrine, there were people there who still held to the doctrine of Christ, who still refused the evil. The Bible says in verse 25, For that which you have already hold fast till I come. Hold fast on your conviction. Hold fast on your holy standard. Hold fast till I come. These people, few people, they did not yield to the pressure of Jezebel and her agents. They resisted and they refused to yield to that. That's a good example for every one of us today that whatever is happening, whenever we see any trace that is not in line with the word of God, we must resist, we must reject, we must stand on the principle of holiness and God will help us to stand in Jesus' name. They, these people, we saw here, they did not accept her doctrine either, and they refused to be influenced by her dangerous and deadly practices. Practices were dangerous, deadly, and damnable. But these few, they refused to be influenced by such evil. I pray that God will give us the boldness and give us the courage to resist evil wherever it is found in the neighborhood in that church, among the workplaces, we must receive them. We must not be influenced. Because we see today, some people are influenced easily. Maybe in the places of work, maybe in the neighborhood, maybe outside there in their place of business, they are influenced by the world, by the activities of sinners. God giving us the grace will not be influenced in Jesus' name. As a believer, it should be a standard and a mark of God's holiness, wherever you are found. So these people we see here who have the promise that the people that did not yield to the pressure that Jezebel and her agents put across. They are the people that did not accept her doctrine. They are the people that refused to be influenced by her damnable heresies. They are the people that remain separated from her evil. They are the people that remain steadfast and loyal to Christ. God is calling us to remain faithful. And by his grace, we shall remain faithful to the end in Jesus' name. Today, Christ still acknowledge and we always acknowledge the fidelity and faithfulness of his ministers. Christ acknowledge and we still acknowledge our faithfulness. Anywhere and any time. He is calling us that we should never allow ourselves to be influenced by evil around us so that we can stand by the word of God. Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 13. Deuteronomy, let's open our Bible. Chapter 12, I read verse 30. Take heed to thyself that thou be not snared by following them. After that, they be destroyed from before thee, and that thou inquire not after their gods, saying, How did this nation serve their gods? Even so will I do likewise. Don't inquire of your evil. Whatever is happening around you, don't allow that to influence you. Let none of those things influence you. And today, by the grace of God, we shall stand. Our pastor shall stand. 
member shall stand. I will not allow anything, will not desire in any way, will not show interest in any way, satanic activities, occultive activities that are going on today in the name of religion. We still around us. But God helping us, we are going to overcome. And we shall overcome in Jesus' name. The promise is awaiting us. Matthew chapter 19, I read verse 27. Matthew chapter 19, let's read together from verse 27. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have therefore? 28, Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me, in the generation which the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging twelve tribes of Israel. What a promise for every believer. What a promise awaiting us today. May God help us to wait and to endure. So that these promises will be ours in Jesus' name. John 14, I read verses 1 and 2. Let's open our Bible to John chapter 14. We're looking at the promises that Christ has made to overcome us in that church and by extension to overcome us today. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If you are not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. That's true. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. That's a promise. Promise given us, we shall overcome in Jesus' name. A promise of eternal mansion. Jesus says, in my Father's house are many mansions, and these mansions are awaiting overcomers. I pray you and I, and every member of this church, will be overcomers in Jesus' name. Let's see 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 25. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 25. And every man that striveth for the ministry is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. That's a promise to receive incorruptible crown. Waiting overcomers. James chapter 1, verse 12. James chapter 1, verse 12. Blessed is the man that endured temptation. When he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life which the Lord had promised to them that love him. We see it there. The crown of life is awaiting us. Overcomers in Christ are promised the crown of life. Let's see the promises awaiting us in Christ. The promises awaiting us in the kingdom. And by the grace of God, we shall all be partakers of these promises in Jesus' name. Second Timothy chapter 4, I read verse 8. Second Timothy 4 verse 8. Henceforth, Paul is saying, There is led up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. You see there, we shall receive the crown of righteousness. And First Peter chapter 5, verse 4. First Peter chapter 5, in verse 4. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, he shall receive a crown of glory, that faded not away. You can see the promises are waiting for ages to overcome us in Christ. That's why we must strive. That's why we must go forth and make sure that we deliver the church 
from every influence, negative influence, that had a tendency of destroying the lives of the people and ourselves, by the grace of God, we shall also overcome. Christ has given us promise of eternal mansion in heaven, promise of incorruptible crown, promise of crown of life, crown of righteousness, and crown of glory, we shall remain. Therefore, a call to us is, let us remain faithful in holiness. Remain faithful in obedience to the entire doctrines of the teachings of the Bible to the end. Let's remain courageous. Let the men abandon. Let the men steadfast. So that at the end of time, we shall overcome because Jesus Christ said, He that overcometh, and we shall overcome. Christ said, He that overcometh. So the promise is for whosoever that overcome. Let's see finally. In Revelation chapter 2, verse 28, and I will give him the morning star. Verse 29, he had had an ear, let him hear what the Spirit say unto the churches. I pray God will open our understanding and grant us ears to hear and grant us understanding to perceive and grant us obedient hearts so that as we hear the word of God, we will be able to obey. As we obey the word of God, we will be able to overcome. As we overcome, we will receive our internal crown at the end of life. We have received the church today. We have seen the challenge today. That whatever is happening around us, Christ is watching. He knows our lives. He knows our conduct. He knows our behavior. And therefore, we are called to repent from everything that contradicts his holy will and then to commit ourselves and give our lives to, to Christ for the service to the end. Let us stand up now and go to God in prayer and ask God in any area you have gone astray, in any area you have allowed corruption in your life, in the church, in the family, in the neighborhood, in any area you have accepted that, you ask God to forgive you, to forgive you as you repent from such things. As you give your heart back to him, as you put away, you separate from such evil, then you pray, the grace of God will come upon you. And then the courage to overcome will come upon you. And you make up your mind that from today, you are going to resist every sin. And God will give all the grace in Jesus' name. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this moment. We thank you for the words you have spoken. We are asking the Lord in any area that these verses have seen in any life. You grant forgiveness, repentance, that such heart will come out of sins in Jesus' name. We are asking, Lord, as a church, as leaders, as members, watch over one another and watch against any infiltration. We watch against any pollution. And by your grace, Lord, we we'll stand firm and we we'll stand fast to the end in Jesus' name. We are praying, Lord, that this church will stand. This church will remain holy and spotted. And will remain focused and committed. And will endure and wait till we receive our crown in Jesus' name. Thank you, blessed Father, hearing our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.